Hello, it's Caroline with For the Love of Crochet, and I have the most special creations to share with you today, and I, I'm just overjoyed at my finished, oh, they're just so special. I don't even want to call them objects anymore, um, creations, my, my finished creations. They're so beautiful, and I've had... Um, I'm just overwhelmed with joy at what I created. Um, so let's, I'm gonna share my, I don't, I actually don't have a favorite because they're each so beautifully unique and I learned something with all of them. This may take a little bit of time, but I sure do hope you enjoy. And so for my first finished creation, this is Magpie. <laughs> and he's just, He's so special. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, let me get you back. Look at it. Look at his tail. I mean, this was such a great pattern. And this yarn, I'll tell you all about it. Okay, so as I mentioned before, this is the yarn I got at Hobby Lobby. It is that huge yarn. I put it away. I have a Hobby Lobby um, haul along with my crochet podcast in a couple episodes ago. I think it was 19. And I bought this Turin Antique Rose. It's backwards, but Yarn Bee Turin Antique Rose. And it was a ginormous skein. And it looked like the rope, the, 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 um, the yarn itself looked like I don't know, just super thick, like it would make a great basket. And I made the puppy as promised and used that yarn. It took a little over, so I couldn't make the second ear. It took two balls to make this. And well, two balls plus and a third one to make the ear. So I had to go back to Hobby Lobby to buy another one. And thankfully they had another one. Um, and thankfully I have two Hobby Lobbies. So one didn't have it. So I went to the other location. It's fairly close. And um, so I was able to finish his ear. Now, I am going to insert a video of how you make this ear or these loops. Uh, because in the pattern it does give you a description and it tells you how to do it and it, it's very good I'm new to pattern reading and so I had a little trouble so I figured it out and then I decided to make a video to see if you have this book Mabel Bunny so good it's so good and they make all their creations she uses her thick yarn and so because she used thick yarn, I wanted to try it with thick yarn because as you know, in my previous crochet podcast, I made the elephant already, but I used a four weight yarn. This is a six weight yarn. It's 75% acrylic, 15% nylon, and 10% wool. And it's just, it's just gorgeous. I just love it. <laughs> and um, yeah I just I really enjoyed making this and when I was done and as I was creating it and look at those paws I did try to color control a little for the legs and feet but it was really hard to get it completely identical um, but I did want the paws to be darker so I did try to stick with that, but in this one I couldn't. Uh, when I finished it, I just felt like, like when you hold your baby and you're like, I made that, I did that. 
you know, that's the way I felt. I was just so shocked at how good little Maybell magpie came out. Oh, and his tail. I just loved it. I loved it. I loved making this. I loved it. Okay, um, what else can I say about that? So I'm going to insert a video here. Hello, my dears. I am working a loop stitch for to give a puppy ear. Um, here is here is my finished one, and I just wanted to show you because the directions are kind of hard. So to make this loop stitch, usually the loop ends up on the back side rather than the front, and so to fix that, I just wanted to show you how I'm doing it. So you insert it like you would normally do a single crochet, but instead of, you know, yarning the, or your normal, you know, pull up a loop, you're, you're gonna not go this way, but go over it, grab this one, pull it through, pull your loop forward, and then finish your single crochet and then that way your loops are in the front and that is how we're getting this look here to show you this yarn so if you make a mistake you cannot undo it it is a very finicky if you notice all the wool is kind of will pull down into and not up to where it won't fit through your stitch and so I couldn't use this yarn to attach the leg to my amigurumi and so I had to use a different yarn but I was just trying to get rid of the tail and so you can't even weave it in with a needle and then even doing this and trying to be gentle it it just it can't do it so if you buy this yarn just know Look at that chunk, how it just pushed all the wool. It is difficult to work with for making mistakes. Um, I fortunately did not have a problem, and so I'm really glad about that. But I was just getting rid of this tail, trying to weave it in a bit, which was the end of my project. So I'm going to try and maneuver this through here and then just cut it. But... It, it does rip too and just pulls apart so yeah I I love it and but I just wanted to warn you about this yarn it is not easy to work with in terms of taking it apart frogging it or weaving in your ends that's it the rest of it I mean I love it I absolutely love it and I want to go buy more so what did I end up doing is I used a regular, you know, a regular four weight yarn and sewed it on that way because this, this yarn was not going to let me do it at all. Uh, what else? So that yarn is, is not froggable at all, especially if, maybe if you know the project, if you know the project, if you feel comfortable with your, with your, um, what's it called? Pattern and you can make it and not have mistakes. That's good. I did not have any mistakes, thankfully, like I said, until I got to the ear. Okay. So I hope that you are able to use that loop stitch and, um, use it in your projects and maybe it will help. Um, because usually the, the loop will be on the opposite side like it's on the wrong side type thing, but flipping it over, you can make it on the right, the one, the side that you want it. Um, so I think, yeah, that's it. What do you think, Mr. Magpie? I just, I'm so happy with him. I just adore it, I just adore it. I just can't stop, I just can't stop. I'm sitting him over here. I'll be right back. Now for my second creation. Ugh. Another complete joy and just complete fascination of this creation as well. I, I'm just, I really feel like I've upped my game this week. I, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it, but now when I look at my pieces, my creations, and I'm just, 
Wow, I did that. I made that. Let me grab them. Okay. Are you ready? Are you ready for this gorgeousness? Okay, so Chronically Crocheting and quite a few other people have joined in on the crochet along that um, Chronically Crocheting started for the cutest crochet creations and everyone is having a ball with this book. This last time I checked as well on Amazon it was five dollars um, it was under six so great book I did a second creation out of here and I can't wait to show you but I wanted to tease you I made the bear <laughs> I made the bear maybe he needs a tie clip <laughs> His glasses are on a little wonky. I had a hard time, but not to worry. I did find something that can help me with this one. Okay, so with him, I used the Bella Coco some yarn, which is this brown, and it was a joy to work with, although I had a couple of knots in that yarn and broken pieces, so, you know, I'm glad I used it for Amigurumi. So here it is, and it was a very thick yarn. And so I tried to find thick yarn to correspond for his sweater. And I wanted my little Mr. Bear to be a little sophisticated. I know um, my co-creator, Cassandra from Craftably Ever After. She's been having a ball with bears and she even has her own tutorial for a bear. Well, she's been having a lot of fun with this and she's made quite a few. So if you haven't seen her videos, it's Craftably Ever After. And um, yes, I made my little sophisticated Mr. Bear. <laughs> she gave hers a little top hat and a pumpkin to make him a little fall. She made a couple of fall ones if you check out her Instagram, but I wanted to make mine different and I was thinking of giving him a hat and now I've come up with an idea. I want to give him one of those, um, you know, those, you know, those little pancake type hats with a little rim, a little sophisticated hat bear <laughs> for him. So here he is. Now, like I said, this was my idea. I just chained some glasses and put it in the shape, but I did find on Pinterest some glasses to put on my Amigurumi and how to make them um, the rims in different shapes. For right now, all I did was glue this one on um, because I felt like stitching it on would give it that plastered look and I didn't want that. So that is what I did. So here's my second. I'm gonna go ahead and submit these to Crystal at Chronically Crocheting because she's gonna post a video or maybe um, showcase all the pictures of all the creations for the crochet along. And this is gonna be my second submission and I'm so pleased. I really like Mr. Bear. I think he's adorbs. Adorbs. So this was my daughter's favorite. Out of the three creations I made, this one was her favorite. So here's his back. Um, what, did I have any trouble with this? No. Oh, okay, see his, I made a mistake on his, mm, what is this? Snout. I was supposed to go another row and the pattern continued on the second page and I thought I was done because I was like, oh, that's a muzzle, so I guess I'm done. So he's actually supposed to have a little bit thicker muzzle and I was thinking about turning it this way, but I think missing that last stitch on his muzzle and, and giving him glasses, I think it worked out great. <laughs> I really enjoyed this one. This was very easy. This was very easy. I really enjoyed this. Okay. I'm really excited to share this one with you too. And with this one, I have been dabbing into sewing. I've inherited my mother's sewing machine back here and I've been trying to learn how to use it. I mean, I did not know how to thread it. I did not know how to start it. And I made a second channel called My Sewing Journey uh, because I'm going to try and document 
my sewing journey. So I will be making a video for that for those of you who decided to go and subscribe over there. I've been recording some stuff and with my third creation, I combine these two specialties, crochet and sewing. And um, I had a really hard time. I, this is something I wanted to do and I had a really hard time finding videos about it or instructions on it. And I finally found something. I finally worked this baby and have been practicing. Um, but let me show you what I created. Ta-da! <laughs> really? Like, this is what I made. He's adorable. So this is Sleepy Bear. I don't have a name for this one, but, um, this helped me practice sewing in a curve. So I was, I was, that's what I'm doing is I'm practicing, trying to do straight stitch, learning how to change threads, all the, you know, all that goodies. Okay. I won't go into it. Another channel, but I'm, I'm just so pleased with how he came out. I mean, they're all he's, I guess. Um, one thing about this pattern, is take a look at that snout. See how the stitches are going this way? I kept working the snout and I'm like, why is it turning into a bowl? I don't, it's not supposed to be, it's not supposed to be curling, right? When you make a snout, you want it to be flat so you can sew it on. It's a completely different snout. A so I kept, I, I did it like three times, changing my hook, hoping that it wouldn't curl up. It kept curling up. So I'm like, what am I doing wrong? Then I looked at the pattern further and I was like, oh, and look at that lovely effect. Okay, so that's, that's pretty awesome. So that is something new I learned and that's, so cool. I really enjoyed it. Okay. And then, um, so what I did here for his belly is I made a template because I just, I just put that against him and then I drew my lines and put two pieces of fabric together, sewed around and you know, you did your thing, but then I had to figure out how to sew it on. And so over here, I've never sewn ever. Um, so I'm not liking the way it's coming out. So then I ended up switching it here and the rest of the way. And now you can't see any stitching. So I love this little sleepy bear. And I got this pattern out of cute amigurumi animals. Oops. And notice how she has a belt well that's a sewn piece of fabric and then her blanket is a sewn piece of fabric like she's had at a picnic so this book incorporates sewing into crochet creations and so this is super cool and this was birdie the furry bear see that See, they used a piece of fabric as well. Only they gave her threads to make it look like she had fur. I didn't do that. So that is where I got that idea. And this is what I created. And this is that ombre yarn from Red Heart, I believe. And look it. Which one was your favorite? You like little magpie here, Mr. Bear, or Sleepy Bear. <laughs> I just had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun. I am so pleased with these creations and I hope you enjoyed them. I hope they inspire you. Grab your hooks and let's get inspired for the love of crochet. 
And then also I wanted to share with you, you remember I, in my previous, if you're new here, thank you for stopping by. I hope you like what you, sh you see. I share all my, anything I've learned, any tips and patterns, all my creations, I share them. Um, all my inspiration, as well as current whips, yarn hauls. And then of course, I've also started a second channel, which I have no videos in yet, uh, which is my sewing journey. Because, you know, I got a sewing machine and I want to I want to start sewing. I would love to make my own clothes in things and house and just all the things. So that'll be on a second channel. I just wanted to let you know if you're new here. If you're not new here, thank you so much for returning. I so appreciate it. Hit the like if you thought if you see anything that you loved and if there's anything you want to try, um, make sure you subscribe. I post every week. <laughs> and then sometimes I have a surprise one in the middle of the week. Um, currently, I have a, cro a crochet along if you want to join in. Not too late at all. Or maybe you have something that fits into this criteria and you can send us your pics via email. But um, KS Mom Crochets, which is Julie and Cassandra at craftably ever after and myself we have a all for fall crochet along going on where we are making an amigurumi project trying to incorporate green a fall item and amigur amigurumi fall and incorporate green sorry so i mean he's got green on would he fit into a fall item i don't know but he is on groomy and he does have green, so something like that. Has to be able to fall into the fall category theme. Uh, so pumpkins, that type of thing, scarecrows. I've gotten lots of suggestions, which is, um, what else is fall? Leaves, falling leaves, and, and mainly the, like the colors, right? We think of all the fall colors. So maybe this would fit because he fits into the fall theme because he has oranges and browns and I incorporated green. So therefore he would fit. So if you want to join in, we started that and we'll be showcasing them on the 9th, uh, July 9th of 2022. So send us your pics if you have something that fits into that criteria. We'd love to see your makes. And then um, also I just a reminder that Pixie Marie Creates, another YouTube creator and designer, she recently had a testing call for a dolphin. And so this is something that I made. This is a test. It was a beautiful pattern. Like I said, this was not something I would gravitate to making, but I fell in love with it. I have never made anything like this, and it speaks to the um, designer Pixie Marie, Marie Creates on YouTube and I believe also on Etsy. This pattern will be coming out, I believe, in the next few days, if not by today. So go ahead and check her out. Check out her Etsy shop. She has lots of cool patterns. But I just wanted to hit that reminder that this pattern is coming out. And if not today, then in the next couple of days. So that is a wrap. I have I had a blast making these three creations and I, I hope you enjoyed them so I shall talk to you soon if not then I'll see you at the end of the week bye